Hello and welcome back to the channel. I feel like I haven't actually made a YouTube video in quite some time, so I kind of apologize for that. But now I'm back. I woke up at 7.30. I have my coffee here and five hours later, here I am. I'm like dedicated to it. So in this video, what we'll do is we will talk about the top five supports, at least position five, actually. Position five, I like it more. Heroes to gain MMR. It sounds like a clickbait. It's not, but these are the heroes that I believe are the best to gain MMR and probably these are not heroes that you see in the competitive scene. So I will, you know, name these five heroes and I will like comment a little bit, maybe help you a little bit. Most of them are heroes that we have made guides for, so definitely go and check them out. If you don't know who I am and what we're talking about, my name is Jeff and I am, I don't know what I am, I'm a 7.3 Support player, I want to say, play offline and mid as well. Support player, I just don't play carry, just don't tell them. I'm a support player and what we do in this channel is we talk about support, we talk about laning sets, we have many examples of position 4 and 5 to understand how to lane, power spikes, atomization, it's all about laning. Maybe this changes in the future, but for now it will not. And of course, if you're new, go and press this, I don't know, comment and dislike and dissubscribe as first of all it boosts my ego and of course i'm a huge ego player you know you can tell that and second of all it helps the algorithm to bring back my channel from the dead one of course <laughs> let's not waste time gg and let's start this now in place number five, we have Snapfire. I think Snapfire is a great hero. There are three main reasons for that, right? First of all, his new shard is extremely good. You have wave clears. The hop distance is 600. That's like half blink. It's really good. You can close gap. Of course, Snapfire was always a really, let's say, strong laner. Snapfire, you can play him in the position four and in the position five role. Just because, you know, he scales really good with levels and XP. And in the position 5 role, all you need is levels. So you'll just get your ultimate and you can just pew pew the enemies. But the main reason, it's not the Sard that's not only extremely good. That's not the main reason why you would you should pick Snapfire. It is mainly because Undying and Phoenix are back in the meta. Especially Undying. And Snapfire is a great hero versus Undying. Maybe not the best in the lane. Maybe not the best in the lane, but versus Egg and versus Tombstone, Lil Shredder is probably the best ability, honestly, in the game to deal with both of these. So I would highly advise you, if you get to see some kind of trend in your games, that you get to see a lot of Undying and a lot of Phoenix, you should pick Snapfire and I think it is a great pick. Right now, in position number four, like in place number four, of course, we have my beloved Disruptor. We have made a guide on how to lane on Disruptor, which is a bit outdated. And maybe I will do an individual guide for all the above heroes, right? And of course, I think Disruptor is in the best place he has ever been in years, right? And again, these are not the heroes that you might see in the professional scene. These are heroes, in my opinion, that you will be, the, you know, you will grind pretty easy, let's say. I find these heroes extremely good. Right? Why is Disruptor a great hero right now? Now, we all know that Disruptor is great when you were to play from ahead, right? If this hero is winning, then Glimpse is, is a great spell. You'll just keep snowballing. Like, no one can escape the Disruptor. But if you're losing, then this hero feels absolutely useless, honestly. It's one of the worst heroes. The problem that Disruptor had, until recently at least, was that your laning state would never guarantee you that you would play from ahead. You would buy 15 mangoes and you were still not guaranteed that you will, you know, win the laning stage because all you had was Thunder Strike. Uh, Glimpse had no damage. Kinetic Field is a joke in the laning stage in a way. So Disruptor is really squishy. His attack is like meh. His stats is like meh. Everything is meh until the hero. So what you would do is like Thunder Strike all the time, but they would just buy more regen. But right now, you can just Thunder Strike and if they start running, you will just use a glimpse, just like in the past. In, in the past, but the glimpse actually deals damage. So this 50, 150, this is actually important because all of a sudden this raptor has two nukes. He doesn't have one; he has two nukes. And we know that if you use uh, the good thing about this raptor, right? If you use Thunder Strike, then everyone you already win the right click battle, right? Because you already remove 100%. If you see the like the text here, 100% of movement speed and attack speed. So in a way, 
when you Thunderstrike, the enemy can't really fight you, right? So you just Thunderstrike, he keeps running, and then he glimpses back, like in the past, but now it deals damage. So in a way, you're more of a lane dominator. Um, also, what I want to say is that people, when you get the first skill, uh, when you're about to respawn, the enemy is about to respawn, actually, you should glimpse them back. People forget about that. And approximately the cooldown of the glimpse is about the respawn time. So keep that in the back of your head. Lastly, what I want to say is that right now you can go, what I go is like go for Thunderstrike into Glimpse, into Thunderstrike, into Glimpse. And then at level 5, you get to decide if you go for Kinetic Field and then Max Glimpse, or you will get Glimpse, Ulti, and again, you have the same dilemma. In a lot of my games, I actually don't even get one point of Kinetic Field until level 8 because I find Glimpse extremely good. But, you know, maybe that's a little bit me overreacting. You should get one level of Kinetic Field, maybe at level 5 or at level 7. Depends if you're still laning or not. If you're still laning, go for more levels of Glimpse. If you're not laning, go for one level in Kinetic Field. All right? Now, number 3, of course, we all expect that Crystal Maiden. Whatever I'll say about the hero is, is just... It, it's just not enough. This hero is absolutely busted. And not only as position 5, but as position 4 as well. Why is this hero position... I feel like he, it's more of a position 4 lately rather than a position 5. And it's really simple, right? Your Arcane Aura is insane right now. You get too much mana. And in the past, and this is what I still um, encourage people to do, don't get Aura level 2 if you're a position 5. Because there are not many carries that actually benefit from Aura. If you think about it, there are not many heroes, you know, Lifestealer doesn't benefit, Troll maybe benefit, Draw Ranger, Phantom Assassin. These heroes don't really get out of mana or have, you know, maybe even some kind of PL, but I wouldn't actually go for that. If you're a position 4, then <clears throat> going for Arcane Aura level 2, if you have a Primal Beast, if you have Elsie, if you have Mars, makes a lot of sense, right? Makes a lot of sense. So, I think this hero is great, their numbers are great, uh, and, you know... If you're in the position 5 role, even in the position 5 role, what I suggest lately is go for some like BKB into Blink into Sart. I know that people are going to say, oh, nya, 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 Jeff, just too much gold. You will find the gold. You will kill. You will kill heroes. You will find the gold. You will find the XP. Worst case scenario, go stack or go and just use Fraging Field on enemy triangle. You will find the gold. Now, if you play versus Slark, versus Clockwork, there's this type of annoying heroes. Probably you should get four stuff, right? But I think Crystal Maiden is probably... I've been saying that for, like, years, literally. This this hero is absolutely busted. He got buffed a gajillion times. He got another buff, right? And, you know, having so much mana is just so hard. All you have to do is make sure your positioning is good in the lane. Number two, right? Number two, we have Dawnbreaker. Of course, we have made a guide about the hero. This hero is absolutely busted. He has been nerfed a gajillion times, right? So tanky, so much damage, and I know that Hammer, the cast range was, was decreased significantly, right? I think the Hammer indeed was, was nerfed big time, but was just insane. The hero is just still super strong, just not absolutely busted. The hero is similar to our guide, it's not, um, it's still uh, dated, it's not out of date. Definitely go and watch it, you will learn how to lane with um, Dawnbreaker, and this hero is impossible. Like, they haven't actually nerfed it. Uh, sorry, they haven't actually buffed it. They have nerfed it. And still, it's better than Disruptor, better than CM, better than Snapfire, better than almost all the other support in the position 5 role. Um, I want to say that do not pick it as a position 4. Um, it's not that it can't work, but you ideally want to have a range position 3. But since you're going to first pick, you don't really know what you will lane with. So definitely pick it in the position 5 role. And of course... We all expect that in the position 1 spot, we have Undying. <laughs> okay. If you haven't seen this hero in your games, you're probably playing below 0 MMR. There is no way. You're probably playing League of Legends or something. There is no way you will not... You're not seeing that, right? And mainly because DK right now, what it does, it in reality, it heals you. And it, it, it permanently decreases health from enemy. In the past, you see like the... Um, it says that damage rescales from 0 to 40, but what he actually did is right now you get to keep the life. In the reality, in the past, when the DK was expired, you would lose, you would lose the extra health, and the enemies would regain the extra health. It was like, it felt a little bit weird, right? Right now, you heal, I feel like, 4 strength is what? 
um, like 80 health, that's like what, almost a tango, maybe a little bit less. But it's like you heal a tango every 10 seconds, just too strong. Of course, our Undying Guide still out there, still broken, still super busted. What I want to say though is that a, real, a little sm small change, right? It says that damage rescaled from 20 to 0. So in level 1, you just decrease their health, but you don't deal extra damage. So if, a, if an enemy hero has 0 health, and you get to decay them, like he has like 5 health or something, you will not kill him. He'll just go to 1, because you don't deal damage. You just decrease their health. There is a difference, right? So you might find like scenarios where you can just go level 2 decay. Let's say you play versus double strength heroes and you know you haven't actually stomped a lane and you feel like you need more decay then you can go for level 2 decay now there are scenarios some people say max tombstone some people say max soul rip tombstone depends if they have snap fair stuff if they have ursus if they have Jaggernauts, this type of heroes soul rip if they have some kind of burst maybe you want to heal someone or you have some really big target that is not allowed to die like husker um, like Laundruid, you maybe may go for more levels in Soul Rape to keep them alive. But definitely Undying is the best hero to gain MMR right now. If you haven't seen the guide, please, it's it's literally for MMR. It's like stealing candy from a kid. It's it's that simple, right? Now, also what I want to say is that um, Undying is great for taking Roshan. So it's a little bit of a, you know, of a boost to max Tombstone because... Zombies take two sheets from Rosan to die. So just the fact that they will actually spawn faster, you can actually take Rosan. Of course, Undying Great Position 3 as well, not Position 4. Unless, again, similar to um, Dawnbreaker, you have uh, a range Position 3, that you know, like a Viper or a DP that you want to protect. And of course, Flesh Golem, still busted, you can still take Rosan. And... I have nothing more to say. It's 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 the best hero. It's like I'm still more into CM because lately I've been playing position four, but I feel like the hero is is insane. I, I've said it too many times. I should stop saying that. Now maybe I do guides for all of these heroes individually, but I still believe that Disruptor, actually not Disruptor, Snapfire, Disruptor, CM, Dawnbreaker, and I'm dying. These five heroes are probably the best heroes to grind now. Jack Hero, Leeds, Grimstroke, Willow. All these heroes are still fine. It's a great and it's a great era to be a support, right? Maybe I will do a video. Maybe that's that's an idea. When to roam, when not to roam, etc. But I think for now I will stop the video. Of course, comments down below. Not only from Ego. If you have questions, I I read all the comments. I answer all the comments. You can join the Discord to ask me their questions. And yeah, that's it. So uh, I'm gonna come back with you this with another video. Ask me questions to G Raza, and I'll see you in the next video.